Hi, my name is Ru Ching. Uh, today in SC21, I'm gonna share a bit about my port of Bliss to just two ARM related architectures. One is the scalable vector extension with some enhancement for ARM Neon also. And another one is the Apple's matrix coprocessor, which is the hidden coprocessor in um, just Apple chips starting from A13. First, let me get a brief introduce to the Bliss. Bliss is the abbreviation of the blast like functionality instantiating software, which features high performance and portability. So it's based on the performance anatomy of the Gosu Blast, which is now known as Open Blast and has a extended API over traditional Blast. And <laughs> it's my major uh, advantage over like Open Blast is it requires a minimal number of assembly kernels which allows a, a easier port over our other architectures. So first I would like to introduce my port to ARM SVE. Well, SVE is an abbreviation of the uh, scalable vector extensions, which, uh, which uses one ISA to include multiple vector lengths. Basically, vector lines start from 128-bit in with 128-bit increment until uh, 2048-bit. Now that we have basically a three, three implementations of SVE present, the first one is the, is the button, the Fuji 2's 512-bit A64FX uh, used on current, just the current reported world top uh, supercomputer uh, Fugaku, and we are going to have in a, in a very short time the ARM's two hundred and fifty six bit Neoverse V one, which is a focus, which is another uh, processor focused on generic uh, high performance computations, and uh, it is reported that the Neoverse N two will also have a one hundred twenty eight bit SVE support, SVE two support. And the both ARM architectures has also a Gen 5 simulator available. So <laughs> this graph shows my a, a Blitz port on A64FX performs. Uh, <clears throat> so first I would like to <laughs> explain a little bit on these a drawback case on TRSM Triangle Solver because I basically only implemented the gem kernel without a triangular solver kernel, so <laughs> just uh, these um, these triangular solver uh, APIs are underperforming the vendor glass because of this missing kernel. And uh, now let's see the gem kernel, gem generic matrix matrix multiplication. The matrix multiplication kernel gen basically the 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 peak is outperforming the vendor glass SSL two. So. <laughs> Uh, of, of course, it features a little bit s slower ramp up in smaller cases, but uh, th this will somehow affect some LAPEC, LAPEC applications, but basically uh, it's outperforming the vendor blast. Next is an update to <laughs> previously reported result in July. It is that oh, I've also added uh, some complex complex type kernels, uh, C gem and Z gems, so that just all gem all gem operations have its peak peak performance above the vendor blast SSL2. And, and in the middle of this graph we can see that uh, uh, because Bliss allows directly applying the gem kernel to uh, like symmetric matrix multiplication, symmetric rank K updating, and uh, a triangular multi uh, triangular matrix matrix uh, multiplication. Uh, Why the vendor blast Fuji to SSL two does not allow doing this. So just <laughs> because the vendor blast lacks these optimizations, uh, Bliss easily get about these uh, vendor blast performance. Uh, yeah basically <laughs> by uh, many times. Uh, finally, I would like to also share the whole chip, the, the full chip performance with 48 threads. Uh, but just please note a little bit that uh, the, the y-axis uh, is showing the G flops per core, not the total G flops. 
So the total gplot like this, this DGM case, which gplot per core is around, around uh, 60. Uh, so the, sorry. So the um, total performance will be 60 times 48 equals to uh, 2.8 t teraflops. And we can see that because the better uh, threading ana anatomy or threading strategy by Bliss, uh, basically all operations, even including the triangular solver, is getting above uh, the vendor Bliss SSL2. So basically we, <laughs> we're having a quite uh, just decently successful port of Bliss on A64FX, but how, 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 how does these kernels perform in other processors like V1? Well, basically, <coughs> uh, basically the performance is good, but I want to mention here one further uh, possibility of optimization because uh, in in SVE there are two kinds of floating point multiply accumulators. Uh, the one is the unindexed one used in here, the the kernel for for A sixty four FX. As you can see in a batch, the the indexed ones have pull support on A sixty four FX, which means that uh, basically, one uh, one index f fmla instruction requires the ALU to perform two operations, where while well, the uh, unindexed ones only requires the ALU to perform one operation. So, uh, just for a a sixty four fx this chip, we have to use unindexed ones, but the index floating point multiplier accumulators are generally nice performing on Neoverse V1. So after so after uh, implementing these kind of kernels, I think we can have even better performance on the Neoverse V1. <clears throat> and in addition to that, <coughs> I have other optimizations on the conventional Neon ISA. Uh, well, <clears throat> this will also benefit the Neoverse V1 because the two the two SVE two hundred and fifty six pipeline in Neoverse V one can also be used as four four neon pipelines, so basically no loss of the of the floating point intensity just just smaller registers yielding just perhaps we are not not to get rise the SVE peak but uh, basically just mathematically no no loss in the peak so. But well, of course, the, these graphs are not on the V1 chip. They are on the, a, a conventional uh, ARM64 chip with four neon pipelines. Uh, it's on the CPU part of Max M1 chip, and I, I think basically it's, it's similar to the Cortex X, the Cortex X by ARM, which which is also a uh, which also has uh, four neon chips. So we can see that with these small and skinny matrix kernels. We have a we have a skinny uh, gem performance like this. Uh, we, the, the first graph was very small k. The second one was with very small n, and the third one is basically a, a inner product like with with small m and n. So we can see that we with, with the additional kernel we can get a um, high very high performance. Uh, just a very decent speed up on these uh, situations. Well, these kind of optimization is only a is sorry it's only it's also a work in progress in SVE on A64FX2, and we'd like to also test these optimizations on uh, Neoverse V1. If I get it good performance, uh, just better than performance better than this, I will I will also put it to the master branch of Bliss. So the second part of my <laughs> Well, what I want to share today is the the port of Bliss to Apple Apple's AMX2. So what is AMX? It's uh, basically an unofficial name of the hidden matrix coprocessor in A16, uh, sorry, A8, A13, A14, A15, and the M1 family chip by Apple. So it does an outer product of uh, 512 bits vector S and Y uh, like this. There is a Z mini matrix and the XY vectors doing the outer product. And accumulating to that, yeah. Uh, just for example, for single precision, 512, uh, 512-bit divided by 32-bit uh, width of the single precision floating point number yields uh, 16 elements. So the AMX does the 16 by 16 to 
256 element update per uh, clock cycle. But there's one thing to mention here. It does uh, such an update with one clock cycle only for double precision and single precision. For half precision, this one update, basically 30, 32 times 32 to 120, uh, 124 element updates requires uh, two clock cycles complete. So just basically unlike the CPU case where the hot precision, single precision, double precision throughput is two to uh, is four to two to one. AMX has a half single and double precision throughput eight by four by one. Just mathematically, it's sixteen by four by one. And uh, because hot precision requires two clock cycles complete, so this hot precision is sixteen is half to eight. Uh, it's quite. It's a kind of similar to the Nvidia's Tensor Core, which does, uh, which is more more or less focused on hard precision. So it used a a six a sixteen by eight by uh, one throughput. Ah. Uh, basically, the instruction design of this AMX. <laughs> uh, unlike traditional, a uh, just basically we have. We, we, we have to store the X and Y uh, vectors in separate register files, one for X and one for Y, and accumulate to yet another register file for Z. And uh, this just unlike traditional vector registers, we treat these register files uh, as a separate vectors. AMX allow taking any 512 bits starting from some place in the register file and treat it as a vector. So we can offset uh, x and y in perhaps one element instead of one vector. So basically, this is quite beneficial to convolutional uh, operations. But uh, yeah, it's it's sorry, it's 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 not of that big a use when doing matrix multiplication. So we still treat it as uh, separate separate vectors. Next, figuring out these uh, instructions, we have we want to uh, assemble these instructions into our program, basically our kernel. But Apple does not provide an assembler for this AMX instructions, so we have to hard code our instruction as a machine code, something something like the the final line <coughs> here. Dot lan and a machine code. But we see that compiler does not control the AMX register state space. So we can just conversely easier for make, make, make C code and instructions like this. So we, we can see that this, uh, the machine code one liner, which just passes the, this register into the machine code. And in fact, because the uh, here the register does not interfere with with the AMX uh, with, with the AMX registers, it, so it's sometimes even easier to write such a kernel because uh, we all we all know that sometimes compiler is is clobbering some registers, but but here it there is no such a problem, so. Just in, in some sense, it's easier without a compiler's interference. And these are three graphs yielded by our, uh, our kernels. Uh, the, the leftmost is the single precision performance, and the, the left bottom is the double precision performance. And right hand side is the hard precision performance. Uh, here we only have a bliss graph for high precision performance. Uh, why uh, the the left panels including in, includes the the blitz performance as well as the accelerate framework which is the vendor blast by apple so we can see that for large for large matrix sizes our our blitz performance the, the performance of our blitz kernel is even get it above the vendor's blast and the right hand side we can see that well just the floating point the hard precision floating point uh, throughput is reaching uh, 2.5 uh, teraflops. 
Well, basically, the codes are already open to the public. We have the the Blitz port for Apple, just basically for Apple Matrix coprocessor. And another one is uh, T Blitz. T Blitz is a Blitz like tensor contraction framework, which is also kind of beneficial if you want to do tensor network computations. The installation can be done either by compiling the source code or just downloading the pre built binary available from uh, Conda Forge. <laughs> so, because it's on, uploaded on the Conda Forge, I've already, oh, sorry, I've also built the NumPy against. Uh, this package. And for the Tensor Blitz site, I ported a Julia package. So this allows you to directly contract in high order, uh, sorry, the high rank matrices in Julia. And this is the end of my uh, presentation. Hopefully this uh, Apple Matrix Tool Processor, well, of course, this will not allow you to port something to the App Store, but if you want some computational computational force, maybe on your uh, ARM-based MacBook, <laughs> please feel free to have a try. Thank you very much.